this is going to be one of the first videos of a series I'd like to do on homestead essential plants. I feel something building up inside me. I must prepare. I must get ready. Serving you, Yahweh, keeps me strong and steady for you. Lord, I'll go for green living. Today I'm going to do a video on some essential plants for your homestead, you know, to grow in your greenhouse. And the first one on my list is red celery. And let me get a close-up of the red stalks. You can see that's pretty red right there. All right. It is high in vitamin A and vitamin C. It's got folic acid, potassium, fiber. It's good for your digestive system, cardiovascular system, and it's a good pain reliever. And seeing that it's red, it has liposin in it, so, you know, that's good for, you know, curing cancer. <laughs> All right, uh, I could go on and on about celery, but I have been growing this particular celery for three years. This is the same plants in the same row here for three years. I just cut the tops off and it regrows and actually multiplies and some of them have like three heads in there. Let me find one. Let's see there's uh, one, two, three, four, five plants in there all together. It is heat tolerant which is an excellent thing. Uh, it likes the water, so I have to water it every day. I can't can't let it go under a droop. And then, but as soon as I water it, it stands right back up. And it's winter tolerant because in the greenhouse, I didn't heat the greenhouse all last year. And as you can see, they're all healthy and happy. All right, let's go to the next one. The next one I want to talk about is lamb's quarter. Now this is not something I purposely grow in the greenhouse but it has became a voracious in here and, and I'm not going to complain and I'll explain why. Alright the the white dust, let me zoom in on this, you see the white dust on the leaves? That is actually minerals that it's pulling up from your soils so whatever minerals you have in your soils is what it's pulling up. You can dry the leaves and use it as a salt substitute, just mix in some other herbs like oregano and pepper and stuff. And uh, For one cup of you, you would eat one cup of it, it has 73% of your daily percentage of vitamin A, 96% uh, of your vitamin C, and use it like spinach. You can either cook it or, you know, eat it raw. Of course, if you eat it raw, I prefer the small leaves they're a little less bitter and it it builds up kind of a the older the leaves get that they, they can get kind of a uh, acid taste to them so it's great for smoothies and for growing microgreens and they really sprout quite efficiently and uh, I pretty much eat them all year round and collect the seeds you know uh, I don't collect all the seeds because I would have billions of seeds in here but I do save some just in case all right let's move on to right. something else the next one is horseradish right here and you can see I'm growing this in my aquaponics this in with cranberries and this one has been there actually two years and, and doing quite well uh, it's kind of divides at the root and so I don't really have to do much but I wanted to tell you a little bit about it this is the bigger one I grow and it's uh, huge usually grow them about six inches in diameter about two foot long but it is a mineral magnet it's well of course it's good in fiber it's good for vitamin C folic potassium calcium magnesium zinc and magnesium it also produces an oil, Sidrigan, I'm sorry about the pronunciation, 
save again. It's a powerful leukosiate. I had to write some of this down. <laughs> it, you know, it fights cancer. So, if uh, you happen to, you know, catch cancer, you know, this, this fights it. Or it'll fight it off. So, I know horseradish is very strong. Uh, I usually take up a little bit and I mix it into, you know, it's something I wouldn't really notice the, the flavor of it. If, if you didn't like it. Uh, I don't mind it and I eat it all the time. Alright, the next plant I'm talking about is horsetail. And you can see it grows up and it looks like a lot like a horsetail. So that's what I call it that. But it is very useful. I mean, I've talked about it before. It's a great antibacterial. It's good for kidneys and bladders, you know, arthritis, bleeding ulcers, tuberous sclerosis, cold, cold <laughs> fevers. Flu, swelling, hemorrhoids, emphysema. It's one of those plants that has silica in it. And because of that, it helps rebuild tissue and bone tissue. It's also good for men's prostate glands and kidney stones. Not just in men, in women too for kidney stones. And that brings us to our next plant. I've talked about this one before and I'm going to link a video to it so that uh, you can get a little more information. But just a little summary here. It's good for urinary issues. I, I dry the leaves and occasionally I'll let the, it helps me with, you know, arthritis. I let it sting me and then my arthritis won't hurt for a week. Not that I have a real trouble with it, but uh, it's really good for men's prostate glands, you know, to help us... Uh, Keep being men, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it's good for hay fever, for bleeding. It's a great anti-inflammatory. But I'll go ahead and link the other video that's totally about stinging nettle and, and let you totally get the whole thing. Talk about that is the moringa tree. And I grow them year-round in the greenhouse, and they seem to do fine, even though I don't heat the interior of the greenhouse. But uh, I wanted to really include this one, even though I have another video, and I'll send you a link to it. And to the, well, I'll post it up there. But every part of this plant is edible. You know, even the seeds. And the, like the seeds, uh, they can be mashed down and make a nice uh, oil. For It's similar to olive oil. You can mash them down and rinse them out with some water and then put dirty water in there and the seeds will purify it. It has 10 times the vitamin C as an orange, 5 times the, the iron of spinach, uh, 10 times the potassium of bananas, well it's just the list goes on and on and I, I wrote down a list of different uh, mineral properties it has in it. Uh, but these words are really long and I'm just going to post them underneath or I'll put, a, put them in a note here so that you can see all the different words. Uh, I don't want to make too much of a fool of myself trying to pronounce them. <laughs> Alright guys, I'm going to pause here for just a second. That should be good enough for my note. And I will catch you guys tomorrow. Oni Ove Ocho. I love you in Hebrew. Live in the way you meant for me to live. Is what I strive to do every day. As I live off the land, lead me at your pace for you. Lord, I'll go for green living. Help me to feed all the hungry. Use me, Lord, to ease their misery. From all this worldly pain and captivity. For you, Lord, I'll go for green living. I 
feel something building up inside me. <laughs> I must prepare. I must get ready.